So let's look in more detail at the parser. Its job is to convert that token stream into an abstract syntax tree. To implement a parser in OCaml, we've actually been using a parser generator. If you look at the parser we created before, it was this .mly file. I'll explain the why in just a second. That's not a .ml file. That's not, strictly speaking, OCaml code. What's happening is we're running a tool that comes along with OCaml that takes in this .mly file and actually generates an .ml file from it. And if I look inside of build here, I can even find that file. It's parser.ml. And there's a whole, whole bunch of code in here that has been generated by the OCaml parser generator to do the parsing based on that much smaller file that we created ourselves. So I hope you can appreciate not having to write all of that code yourself, instead just writing this perhaps cryptic, but fairly succinct definition of what the parsing of the language looks like. Okay, so now to explain uh, the why. There's an old parser generator from C called YACC, Y-A-C-C, that stands for yet another compiler compiler. Uh, the idea of compiler compiler there is that you're taking in something that defines the, the language and compiling it to produce something that can then compile the language. OCaml YACC was created as an OCaml version of YACC. And then later on, a more modern version of this was created called MENHIR, which is completely different altogether. Okay, so we're using the menhir parser generator in building our parser for the simple calculator language. Uh, but the reason the file is named .mly is because uh, of yak. It's a nod to that history. Inside our parser.mly, we declared a bunch of tokens. Only one of those tokens carried additional data along with it, and we got to specify what that should be. So all of these are tokens that the lexer would produce int carried an OCaml int along with it. And EOF is a special in the file token, which means there are no more tokens produced. We had some more declarations about precedence and associativity. We played around with left versus right associative definitions for plus. Left associative means, of course, the parentheses group to the left. Right associative means they group to the right. You can also write non associ which would cause the parser to believe that x plus y plus z is ambiguous and force the programmer to write parentheses to clarify what they mean. The lower down a token was in this list of associativities, the higher precedence it had. So because times occurred below plus, then one plus two times three was parsed as one plus quantity two times three, not the other way around, quantity one plus two times three. In our implementation, we used a lexer generator. We didn't write the lexer by hand. Instead, we wrote a file that OCaml then used a tool to produce a lexer out of. So we wrote this .mll file, and OCaml actually compiled that into a lexer .ml file. Again, we can look in the build directory to find that. And here's all the code from the lexer that we didn't have to implement ourselves, including a bunch of really weird looking stuff up here. So it's nice that we don't have to do that ourselves. This lexer generator converts the .mll file to a .ml file. Now there's an old lexer generator from C called lex. We are using OCaml lex, which is an OCaml equivalent of that. So the extra L at the end of .mll there stands for lex. In our lexer.mll file, we had a header, which just had open parser in it. That's actually literally OCaml code that will get copied into the generated file. The open there was a convenience to make our parser tokens available in the lexer. In the lexer, we wrote some identifiers for classes of tokens, white space, digits, and ints. I actually used regular expressions to do this. So a regular expression is something you might have already encountered in computer science. If not, you will see it in 2800 eventually. Regular expressions are super useful and something that all of you should definitely learn at some point. Here I'm using them to help define the syntax of tokens. White space was any space character or any tab character. 
And by putting them in square brackets, that's OCaml Lex's regular expression syntax for saying either one of them. And then I could follow that with plus to mean one or more of either. For digits, I had the character 0 and the character 9. I then put those together inside of square brackets with a dash to say any character from 0 to 9 inclusive in ASCII. An int was then one or more digits, so the plus meant one or more. The, optionally, there was a minus sign in front of it. The question mark meant optional. And so an int then was one or more digits optionally preceded by a minus sign. So that's the regular expression syntax. I then had a production rule. That production rule described how to produce tokens out of the character stream. I named that rule read. That was my choice. But the rule and parse there are keywords. And as part of that, then, I just put in what I wanted to read from the token stream and what I wanted to return as a result of having read it. So everything inside of the curly braces there was a return value. Read here therefore became a function that could be used to read a token from the token stream. Parse was a keyword. When I wrote white here, what that meant is if the next characters from the character stream match the regular expression white, then recursively call read on the remaining characters in the stream, thus skipping the white space. So lexbuff here is a variable that the lexer knows about and that is actually the character stream. So if the next characters from the character stream match any of these strings, then we'll return the corresponding token. Next, if the characters from the token stream match the int regular expression, then we would return an int token and use some functions that are built in here to convert what we matched from that regular expression into an OCaml int. So lexine.lexeme lexbuff was the string that matched the int. And finally, we could return the end of file token when the character stream became empty.